This is Nintendo Voice Chat, and uh, there's some discourse going on right now. I don't know. I don't use the internet very often, but even I have been unable to avoid the is $60 too much for Donkey Kong Country Returns HD discourse. And that is going to be the topic, our main topic of discussion for today. So let's let's break it down. So Nintendo has been doing some uh, some remakes. We've got Donkey Kong Country HD coming up. This is the third time we will have gotten this same game first on the Wii and then on the 3DS. Uh, Luigi, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD just came out. A fine game we played. You should watch last mm -hmm. week's episode where we talk about it. That one was also full priced. <sighs> What's the deal? Uh, that wasn't a very good Seinfeld. But why can't we get price cuts on Nintendo games? I'm going to ask the panel. Logan, let's hear your opinion. Is $60 too much to pay for these Nintendo remakes? Yeah, I think that's a hard that's a hard question to answer because obviously money is a different situation for everybody. But if I try to just look at it kind of bird's eye view on the pricing from the company deciding to make their remaster of this game $60, my personal answer is no, and I don't know if that's going to be a popular take, but I don't think so. I think you look at the video game industry and you look at how many studios and publishers and companies are struggling to make it through right now. And then you look at Nintendo, who is thriving. And yes, they have these huge $30 million sellers in their shareholders meeting. They basically said, if we have a $30 million, a 30 million copy seller every three to five years, we'll be fine. But sprinkled in the years in between those, they have stuff like this. And yeah, if you want these huge, big budget video games that take six years to make, like that's how long Zelda games take to make now, pricing a game like this helps them do that. It, they're going to make so much money on a game like Donkey Kong Country Returns HD that will allow them to keep making the awesome games that we all love, that we want to see from them. And if it's too much for you personally you don't have to buy it. And so that is a tough answer because it might mean you miss out on some stuff that you do want to play. But there are people who post stuff for cheap on Facebook. There is eBay sellers. Games do go on sale sometimes. There's this myth that they never go on sale. They do go on sale sometimes, not as much, but they still do. So no, I think it's fine. I think that the people who want DK Country Returns HD for $60 will be there. And the people who don't, won't be there and that's fine that's what nintendo has decided they obviously put a lot of thought into decisions like this they've decided this is the right price point for them for this game for whatever return they're expecting to get however many copies that they're going to sell so i personally don't have an issue with it all right jada what about you how are you feeling on this contentious issue so i'm split because i mean if you go back like a banana back split in... oh it's yes. a donkey kong joke you got, it. you got it i'm glad you got that seth Thank you. Um, I appreciate you. So, <laughs> uh, gotta set you up, buddy. Um, so, you know, if you look back, you know, obviously, barring inflation and stuff like that, games way back in the day were like eighty four ninety nine and stuff like that, and that was for like new games back on Super Nintendo and stuff like that. Um, Donkey Kong, you know, this being a remaster, being sixty bucks, it's it's a bit of a tough pill to swallow, like Logan says, but and. To Logan's, you know, points like, yes, this is helps keep studios healthy. Like, honestly, I'm surprised games aren't more expensive. I'm not saying I want them to be more expensive because I want to be able to afford more and more games as time goes by. But also. Nintendo used to have programs uh, that we haven't seen on the Switch, uh, but like back on the, the Wii era where this game initially launched. We had the like Nintendo selects we had, you know, previous to that, there was the player's choice. And this was Nintendo's way of like celebrating a game that has sold millions of copies. And now like, hey, let's get some let's put it in the hands of more people at a more affordable price. And they would sell them for like 20, 30 bucks um, for those games. So could this one have potentially been a case to bring back that Nintendo selects? Yes, it could have been but at the same time does it need to be i don't think so i think i think logan is spot on with his points about like this is what helps keep nintendo healthy and making all these great new innovative games that we love you know it's like we got we've got echoes of wisdom coming in a little bit and that's a completely brand new thing brothership mario and luigi brothership that's a brand new thing like if they're charging more for remasters of a game that you know a lot of the audience probably has played already i think that's fine because that audience doesn't need to buy the game again 
this is this may this is going to be for some young switch owners it's going to be their first time playing the game because they didn't sure. have a Wii. they didn't have a 3ds so this is you know selling it at 60 bucks with which is what they sold it for originally and giving more stuff and a better experience i think that's a fair thing to do for nintendo all right all right fair enough uh cat before i ask your opinion i just want to say how happy i am to have you back on the show and i am very much looking forward to hearing what you have to say regarding this issue is 60 dollars too much to pay for these remasters i think that a lot of people are i, I think it speaks to a deeper issue which is Nintendo has turned <laughs> double dipping and triple dipping and quadruple dipping and quintuple dipping with its games into an art form going back to <laughs> at mm -hmm. least the Wii U, yeah. mm -hmm. maybe earlier when, you know, they were releasing old. How many times have we purchased Super Mario World at this point? Gosh. And and I'll do it again. And I'll do it again. <laughs> Also, the quality of some of these remasters are not the highest. Uh, I think Donkey Kong Country Returns HD is a case in point. The studio has been confirmed to be Forever Entertainment, which has worked on somewhat spotty remakes of Panzer Dragoon, Front Mission mm. First, Front Mission Second, and some eagle-eyed fans have already started comparing Donkey Kong country returns hd to the original release and have found it a little bit wanting mm -hmm. and sure it might be in development still there might be a lot of polishing and cleanup to be do it done but it begs the question of so you're charging full price for a another remaster and a kind of a sketchy remaster and hey maybe maybe you can charge what the market will pay and probably do pretty well. I think Nintendo first party Nintendo Switch games are practically guaranteed to sell two to three million units at this point. So Nintendo is just gonna do what Nintendo's gonna do. But yeah, I, I get why people are feeling a little frustrated about this. Oh, for sure. Um <laughs> yeah it's uh I'm I always default to the well value is subjective and Nintendo can charge whatever they want as long as people buy it. And the thing is, is Nintendo had uh, has some very intelligent business analysts who said, you know, kind of to what Jada said, like a lot of people never played this game and it's from us so we can charge $60 for it and <laughs> sell tons and tons of them. And basically the only people who are going to complain are uh, people like us. Uh, I happen to own this on 3DS and Wii. In fact, had I given it five seconds of, of uh, forethought, I would have had it running on the Wii behind me. But yeah, that's the, the kind of the problem with these is that people generally just say, oh, you know, all they're doing is they're, they're turning up the graphics sliders and there's not a lot of development costs and it shouldn't cost this much. But that's wrong. That is labor value of theory. And we're talking about subjective value of theory. Now, the cornerstone of the Austrian School of Economics. I'm not going to get in. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. But basically, they can kind of charge whatever they want. And if people don't buy it, then you'll see a price drop. But for now, I get a feeling I, I'm, I'm not interested enough in this game. Actually, while we were watching the footage, I did have a point that came to my head. I am not interested enough in Donkey Kong Country. Uh, returns HD to pay $60. That being said, Wind Waker, yep, I would pay full price mm -hmm. to be able to play that game. Um, are there any games that come to your, like come to mind immediately that you would just, any of you would have no problem just dropping $60 on a remake? Cat, is there anything that comes immediately to mind to, for you? A game in which I would have no problem dropping $60 on a remaster or a remake? Yes. yes. Um, Chrono Trigger. <laughs> oh my God. I would drop $80 on that. Wow. I, would do I mean, you would have back in 1994 or something like that. <laughs> that is, that is true. I think I paid like $90 for my copy of Final Fantasy two for Super NES back in the day. That was $90, whatever, 1993 money. So $12,000 in today's money. Logan, what about you? Is there anything that you just wouldn't even think twice about dropping $60 full price on, even if it were just, just a graphical overhaul? 
I think they could have sold Metroid Prime Remastered for $60 and gotten away with it. I think I that that is, one, yep. uh, that's where a lot of this issue comes from, I think. The discourse that's happening yep. right now. And, and and to circle back on my previous comments, I don't want to sound like someone defending the multi-billion dollar company because that's not how I mean to come across. How I mean to come across is if you don't think something is worth $60, it doesn't mean that they can't price it at that. It means vote for it with your wallet and don't buy it. I too, like yep. Kat said, I think Donkey Kong Country Returns HD looks pretty rough for a remaster. I don't think it looks great. I don't want to spend my $60 on it. That being said, there's some people that will. So if Nintendo's going to charge that, they have all the right to charge that. I think that we we just get into the kind of these murky waters, like you said, Seth, where it's like, well, what is the value of something? Is it how long it took them to make it? Or is it how good the game is? This is a great game, but a shoddy remaster of a great game. I don't know how to assign a dollar value for that. And then when Nintendo comes out and puts 40 (laughs) bucks on Prime Remastered and then 60 on this, it confuses people. Or Mario vs. Donkey Kong, Mm -hmm. which is a full remake, that one's $50. Like They're all over the place. And I think that this year is the weird one because of Luigi's Mansion 2 HD and Donkey Kong Country Returns HD, which are pretty bare bones stuff. And that is what's having, is getting people hung up on the price when past examples say they don't charge 60 for this stuff. So it is yeah. weird how they've been deciding to do it lately. Yeah, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either. But Jada, nice. what? Mm-hmm. Nothing, nothing confuses a fan base more than a lack of consistency. And that's that's basically what the issue is at hand here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, you know, to Kat's point, I haven't really looked super deep into this one about the developer doing this remake and it having kind of like shoddy looks. I, ha- I haven't looked at it beyond the trailer. Like I watched the trailer. I was like, oh, cool. Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. Sweet. Um, am I going to pick it up? Eh, probably not. Like yeah. probably leaning towards that. Oh, just fall. Um, here in sounds, I got ghosts in my. Uh, my office shawl. Um, but as for it's very spooky. We're almost to spooky season. Um, but as We're for not. games, I would pay for a sixty dollar like remake. Uh, you know what? I I know we've gotten a bunch of these, but I've bought them all and I'd buy it again. Ocarina of Time, baby. Oh, Give me an Ocarina of Time sixty dollar remaster that impa- uh, include the master quest as well, yeah. like they did back on the GameCube. And uh, yeah. I'll I'll give happily give Nintendo another sixty bucks. Would right. you pay sixty bucks for a sixty FPS Tears of the Kingdom remaster with no new no. content? No, not at all. Well, you didn't I, even I, like I, Tears I, of the Kingdom, Jada. I didn't like Tears of the Kingdom as much as the rest of the panel. Correct. So I mean, I do I do like Tears of the Kingdom, but there is no, I don't think there's anything that would get me to rebuy Tears of the Kingdom. Uh yeah, opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would, I would, would buy, buy it, it again. so fast. I would buy it in a second to like, and it's yeah, it's like uh, Link has a new hat, and I would just rush <laughs> past all the other games and just go buy it. In- new dungeon. I, f- I mean, I could see them doing something like that when the next Switch comes out, where it's like it's basically it's a hundred percent the same game plus two percent extra, and like what about a Breath of the Wild remaster? Um, even less so for me <laughs> i was going to originally say yeah not so much but i think that uh and i've talked about before tears of the kingdom came out i decided to start replaying breath of the wild having not played it since um since release when i just you know i put 150 hours in it and before tears of the kingdom came out i put 46 hours in to breath of the wild so that and i wasn't even i, I barely progressed the story i was just doing breath of the wild stuff I kind of think that seven years later, were they to do a graphical upgrade to Breath of the Wild and then maybe um, maybe do add a couple of dungeons or more t- uh, Tears of the Kingdom style sort of exploration. Yeah, that would that would that would hook me in a minute. However, this is to why be fair, they charge full price yeah. because we're sitting here going, yeah, I buy that. Yeah, oh no! I, I mean, earlier I said I would buy a remaster of Tears. Uh, excuse me, of Wind Waker. I would just buy the Wii U version of Wind Waker if I could play it on Switch, and I would pay sixty dollars for that. I am part of the problem, and everyone and they, can just sit and leave unhappy, helpful comments in the in the in the comments. Yes, Logan. 
they've crunched the numbers, right? Like they know that let's say they're projecting a million sales at a $60 price point. Maybe they don't project 2 million at a $30 price point. Maybe they just don't do that. They, they have some sort of internal decision-making to decide yeah. this because mm -hmm. they're so inconsistent, which obviously means they have some decision-making process on every game they make. We'll never know what that is, but they, they clearly know 60 is the, the price point for this one. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like it, but like I said, yeah. just just don't buy it if you don't like it. Yeah, that's. Can I, can I read a quote? Oh yes, Satoru Iwata. That oh, maybe that guy. I love that guy. Gives some insight into their thought process. <laughs> he was talking specifically about hardware, mm -hmm. but this could probably apply to software as well. Where he said. My personal take on the situation is that if you lower the price over time, the manufacturer is conditioning the customer to wait for a better deal, something yeah. I've always thought to be a strange approach. Of course, this doesn't mean that I'm against lowering prices entirely, but I've always wanted to avoid a situation where the first people to step up and support us feel punished for paying top dollar grumbling. Yeah. I guess this is the price I pay for being first in line. and. Honestly, if you look at a lot of games that come out and say like the Steam Summer Sale or something, people, you're, you're getting 30, 40, 50% price cuts and people, and yeah. you're just paying a premium to get it early, I guess, right? Yep. Yeah. I, you know, a great example of a company that has set themselves up for exactly what Mr. Iwata was saying they didn't want to do is Ubisoft. Mm -hmm. Every time a Ubisoft game comes out and if I post it, a link to it on like the, the deals mm -hmm. uh, Twitter account, People would be like, why would I, I'll just wait two weeks till it's $15 because it all, almost always is. I think the only game that didn't have an, a nearly instant price drop was Prince of Persia, which now of course is on sale. But yeah, that is, people have been conditioned by Ubisoft to be like, well, why would I buy Assassin's Creed at $70 when in like sometimes as little as two weeks, it'll be, you know, 20% off, 25, 30% off. So especially for uh, those holiday releases when there's because we all know that there's oh, yeah. big sales on games during the holidays and there's, you know, October, November is a big month for game releases. Oh, God. And yes, and people know, I mean, and this isn't even an Ubisoft's fault. This is just, you know, uh, capitalism and in the industry as, as a whole. But, you know, Black Friday rolls around and people are like, I can get, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 percent off this thing if I just wait until then. Um, yep. so it's just, you know, it's just kind of how the, the, the market kind of works sometimes. Yeah. That's why we have a very hard time getting people to click through and buy televisions any time of the year that isn't Black Friday, because everybody knows that's when you buy a television. But Black Friday, I'm glad you mentioned that because it does sort of remind me of, uh, the fact that we have here on our notes that the switch itself has never seen any sort of meaningful price drop seven years later if you want to go buy a nintendo switch it is 299 dollars for the base model two excuse me 349 for the oled there have been a few pricing sort of uh differences here and there but it's nothing substantial and nothing permanent I, really yeah like I, I think maybe the the, the oled was on for like 329 but my question to the panel is, do you think this is the year, this is the Black Friday where we finally see the Super, <laughs> excuse me, the uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Bundle for less than 300, or excuse me, $299.99. Kat, what are your thoughts? Are we ever going to get a Switch price drop as long as the Switch uh, is the only Nintendo console on the market? I mean, why bother at this point? Isn't the market <laughs> a little bit saturated? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty crazy uh, how many they've managed to sell. People are buying second, third switches. Yep. They're, if anything, instead of doing a price drop, I think they're almost treating the Switch Lite as their price drop model. Mm -hmm. where they're releasing, say, the gold Hyrule-themed Nintendo Switch Lite and going, don't you want another one <laughs> right here? <laughs> huh? Mm -hmm. And people so are like, shiny. yes, I guess. I thought it was interesting that I think the PS2 Slim by this point in its life cycle had been slashed to like pretty, pretty far down. So it was like see. 100, 120 bucks. Yeah. Point. Okay. So the Switch, the PS2 came out in 2000. 
So by this point in its life cycle, it would be two two thousand seven. That the equivalent of that, I think. Wow. And by that time, we had the PS2 Slim, and the PS2 Slim was very cheap. Yes. And that's what mm -hmm. was, and it was still, it still had a lot of life. Uh, not for nothing that God of War Two came out in two thousand and seven. Yep. And it was still very active in Japan for at least another couple of years after that. But uh, just because of had such a big install base and because the PS3 and the 360 were slow, so slow to get off the ground. But uh, the Switch is one of the best-selling consoles of all time, and there's still demand to double and triple dip on it. So I don't know if Nintendo wants to. Maybe yeah. if they want to hit some arbitrary sales targets and get one last squeeze one last holiday out of it. But I don't know. I don't think we're going to see one. All right, Jada, what do you think? I'm with Kat. I don't think we're going to see one this year. I think we may see some type of like, you know, this is all dependent on when they announce the Switch 2's release date. But like, say that we get a Switch 2 announcement that it's coming next fall. I could see them doing a spring sale, like around Easter and stuff for a Switch to, and doing a like a price drop around then. I could see them doing that to get that final squeeze, like literally six months before the new console drops. I could see that happening, but I don't see it for this holiday. All right, Logan, what are your thoughts? You know, when I, when I talked to Doug Bowser last fall at Nintendo Live, and I asked him about a Switch price drop, and he basically said that Nintendo sees increasing value by packaging and software rather than lowering the price. So I could see them right. doing that this holiday and saying, hey, it's Mario Kart and Smash Brothers in a bundle with yeah. Nintendo Switch or something like that. Add in a second game, add in a third game and keep the price at 300. So you're getting a little bit more in the box, but I don't think the price is ever going to go down. All right. Well, I think you're all wrong. And I think we're going to see the first $249 Black Friday Nintendo Switch bundle this year with Mario Kart 8 and three months of, uh, of uh, Nintendo Switch online. It'll be the same exact bundle, but I think it's going to be 249 Or I think we'll see a 299 Switch OLED bundle of some sort. But I just want to point out, by the way, that Nintendo dropped the price of the Wii to $199 in 2009. So that would have been, what, two, two three, three years, years after the release of yeah. the Wii? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which would have been the equivalent of 2020 for the Switch, I think. Um, and then it dropped the price of the Wii again to $130 in 2012. Dang. So they were, if anything, more aggressive with one of its best-selling consoles. So I think yeah. I just think it's interesting that Nintendo's like, no, we're not cutting the price ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do think the Wii s fell off a lot faster, um, mm -hmm. and I think that I reflects the the price drops. Just because there was so much shovelware, um, everybody by the end of the sort of the Wii's life was had an HD TV, and we're like, why am I looking at these horrible? Uh, pixels that are in 480, you know. And now there's so much Wii nostalgia. Everybody oh, loves the Wii. I know. I'm glad because it actually, I, I am surprised having played Wii on a CRT of standard definition. Like it looks really good, actually. I don't know what we were all complaining about. I complain. I mean, who doesn't love carnival games? Oh my gosh. <laughs> what a classic. <laughs> That that maybe maybe that had something to do with it. Also, there's. I didn't love going to Walmart and seeing just the uh, the equivalent of mobile game shovelware sitting yeah. on those shelves for five bucks and going, I buy that. <laughs> yep. Who doesn't want to go elf bowling? Actually, I don't know if that came to we. I, I think it was only on DS. But I think there was like a gingerbread man racing or something like oh that. Oh my there's god! Just, yeah. There it is. Carnival games. games. Yep. I remember right. the day we Who got doesn't... this. Oh. <laughs> This and is a very uh, grandma well. got you a video game video yes. game. Look, Nintendo you know what is, it is. Look, I play ski ball on the Switch. Are you kidding me? <laughs> ski ball in real life Especially is awesome. Especially if I won great prizes. I think, is there, <laughs> Didn't I just, Carnival I, Games have a revival at some point? It did come yeah, back. Yeah, it did. No, they had it. Yeah. yeah. I think there is one on Switch, actually. Yeah. I think it's like Carnival just Games. Just nobody cared about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everyone's like, we're, we're beyond that. I misspoke. That. It was, You're right. It did come out on Nintendo Switch. <laughs> and it's nice. almost knows. always on sale so did people I, uh, buy it though so i was mistaken it wasn't uh gingerbread man racing it was ninja bread man ninja bread man ninja bread okay. ninja bread that's man. right yeah. nice golly 
we for all hey, so strengths. can i say one more thing about the yeah. nintendo selects because that was uh that was an interesting part of the conversation i wanted to touch on is that i think nintendo does deserve some criticism for its pricing i think that they they tout themselves as they're a company for everybody but it is for everybody as long as you can afford the price of admission and yes they are a company their goal is to make money and appease the shareholders and i understand that and i totally get awada's quote cat brought up too about not diminishing the value of their products but when we're talking about like seven years on i always thought that the nintendo selects was such a great way to be able to get people who don't have as much money still in on the ground floor of these experiences and if you're talking about building long-term a loyal fan base then that's the way to do it is to hey breath of the wild is seven years old here's a 30 dollars or 25 dollar nintendo select version with a big red banner on the box and it comes out way way later down the line and i just think it's a shame that we're all very lucky here that we can play all the nintendo games that we want to but not everyone is in that situation and it's a company for everyone and for families and like kids out there who are growing up that that don't have that much money it'd be great if later down the line they can pick up this whole generation of stuff for a lot cheaper and they're just not doing that right now yeah. they dropped the 2ds to 99 bucks at one point yeah. with like mario kart 7 mm -hmm. bundled in yeah. that's a huge huge deal for a lot of people and the switch just has nothing like that and i do think that's a point where they deserve a little bit of criticism well I would say that the player's choice in Nintendo Select games had more to do with trying to revive sales on uh, games that maybe had slowed down uh, more yeah. so than trying to provide value for consumers. Um, it's easy for them to hide behind that sort of explanation like, hey, we're trying to, you know, we're, we're doing right by our consumers. We're dropping the prices. But cynically mm -hmm. and realistically, I think it's like, well, these games have sort of slowed down. They're, they're years old. And I think we see this less now, but I can remember just not wanting to play old games. Like when uh, when Super Nintendo came out, I, I just start throwing up when I saw a Nintendo. Ah, oh, it looks terrible. Like we would just move on. I did that at almost every generation up until about the end of the Xbox 360 era, where I just was done with whatever. The, you know, I gave my GameCube to my cousin because I was like, I will never have this again. And uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. But yes, I being cynically, I think it, it has more to do with flagging sales. But obviously, we'll never know. The actual yeah you're right but it does just serve that alternate purpose that it sure. does allow more people to mm -hmm. get in the door yeah it's also like to be clear i love my switch but it's incredible that this this system which was underpowered when it was released it is functionally an ad a souped up android tablet <laughs> yep. with very old mobile technology is still being sold for the price that it's being sold they didn't even slash the price on the base model yeah <laughs> yeah like you would think they would at least slash the price on that one but no they're not gonna do it not gonna do it mm -hmm. yeah when they introduced the second version of the base model with a better battery life they still were selling the original ones for the same price and they just sort of would let you know like hey this one is got you know three and a half hours and this one has the nine hour battery life but that's it they didn't slash the price they just let that stock sort of go away and yeah it's Nintendo is just doing very well for itself and people just <laughs> want to spend all their Nintendo bucks on Nintendo products. But I'm going to start saving for whatever the next one is that we'll never get a price drop on 